While Gamera vs. Barugan was a fine follow-up to the original, it failed to capture the attention of its target audience, namely children. So in an effort to please its younger fans, original Gamera director Noriaka Yuasa was brought back in to craft a new film closer in tone and style to the first film, while also delivering more on the fun-filled thrills kids were expecting to see. And so in 1967, Dai released Gamera vs. Gauss, the film that proved that third time's a charm, establishing the winning formula that would inform the Showa era of Gamera going forward, for better and for worse. The eruption of Mount Fuji attracts the attention of Gamera, while at the same time a small village obstructing the construction of a highway in the area is terrorized by a monstrous bat creature named Gauss, whose attempts to eat a local village boy are thwarted by the well-timed arrival of Gamera. Injured in the fight, Gamera is forced to retreat and recuperate, leaving Gauss with free reign to wreak havoc in Nagoya. As Japanese scientists and military officials hurriedly attempt to understand and defeat Gauss, and as each plan of theirs fails one after another, other, they must listen to the wisdom of a child and place their faith in Gamera to recover and vanquish the bloodthirsty beast for good. <laughs> Gamera vs. Gauss is a clear answer to its darker and more mature-themed predecessor. Once again, a young boy is given center stage in the most basic of B-movie monster plots that is more concerned with having fun with its premise than telling a serious-minded story. This is by no means a negative, however, as thanks to a solid premise and lots of monster fights, the film excels at being exactly what it intends to be, and in doing so becomes a delightfully colorful and darkly humorous tale that fills every prerequisite you'd expect out of a kaiju film and at children. <laughs> Indeed, perhaps the single best thing about Gamma vs. Gauss is how well it achieves its goals. Those looking to get their kaiju fix will likely not be disappointed, as the film is filled with action from start to finish, much of it quite bloody and gruesome. Gamma and Gauss fight on three separate occasions, and there is a savage, animalistic quality to them that gives them an edge without being so over the top so as to leave kids screaming with their eyes closed. The second fight in particular, where Gamma and Gauss scuffle in the skies over Nagoya, is fun and creative creative despite the obvious limitations of the time holding it back. Every scene between the two utilizes them to the best of their abilities, making for a rollicking and charmingly low-budget good time. <laughs> Of course, there is human stuff between the monster scenes you have to sit through, and luckily Gamera vs. Gauss has a well-paced human plot to stitch it all together. Make no mistake, it's not deep or particularly remarkable, but it's never boring, and like the previous Gamera films, features a large cast of proactive characters to lead you through the story. Many familiar faces make a return, including Kojiro Hongo, here playing Shiro Susumi, a well-meaning foreman who leads the charge to stop Gauss. The human focal point, though, is Aichi, a young boy who cheers on Gamera camera all throughout the film. He works well as an audience surrogate, and unlike Toshio from the original film, actually has just cause to align himself with Gamera, and thus doesn't irritate. Much like Berugan in the last film, Gauss is a creature whose simple design belies some dangerous abilities, chief among them the cutting beam it emits from its mouth, the results of which leads to some humorous visual gags, as well as some visceral bloody moments that make you feel for Gamera. Every hero needs a good villain, and Gauss fits that mold nicely, giving the flying turtle a real run for his money in this film. And so it's no wonder this monster, despite being a bit generic, would go on to become his most iconic enemy. Technically, Gamera vs. Gauss runs the gamut between good for its time and laughably underwhelming. Certain effects, namely the blood and gore, are very well done, as is the model work for cities and landscapes. Where the film suffers, though, is in the execution of Gauss. Certain times it's fine, but when flying it looks stiff and fake in a way that isn't up to par with the standards of the time. However, this only adds to the film's charm, as does Noriaki Yuasa's direction, which is solid and utilizes some clever camera trickery. Tadashi Yamauchi returns to lend the film another somewhat generic soundtrack, though it does have its high points, namely an original children's song that closes out the film. It's corny and catchy in all the right ways, to the point where you may catch yourself singing it every once in a while.
Gamera vs. Gauss is a simple, highly entertaining monster movie that, while clearly aimed more for children, can be enjoyed by all ages as long as you approach it with the right mindset. Those looking for monster action will find plenty of it here, and much of it is amusingly brutal, a style that differentiates it from the more sterile action of the Showa-era Godzilla films. And once more, it's all held up by a straightforward story that knows when to get out of its way and doesn't overstay its welcome. The film is an enjoyable ride for those with the stomach for it, and one of the best entries in the early Gamera series. For more reviews and opinions on all things Gamera, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.